Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. What we're going to talk about in this video is what Synology can do for you as far as backups go. Now, it is not going to be a comprehensive guide. Stop, rewind it, listen to that sentence again, because I'm sure the comments are going to get out of control. This is not a comprehensive guide, because if I was to create a comprehensive backup guide for Synology, it would be a video 15 to 20 hours long, right? Maybe we'll eventually get there. If you do, if you are interested in that, uh, check out my Twitter post. We are putting together our Synology trainings. And if there is a, enough of, uh, of you that want that, then we will offer a two-day training on nothing but Synology backups. So it's all about who wants the backups, right? But uh, what we're going to talk about in this video is from a company standpoint or even from an MSP standpoint, how do we use Synology devices to do backups where do we put the backups? What kinds of things are we backing up? All that good stuff, right? So I've got this little diagram here. What can Synology do as far as backups go? And this is going to be a continuing series of videos that we do. What can Synology do? There's going to be a boatload of videos, and it's going to go all year, and it's going to mix in with some of the other videos I'm working on. So in the upper right-hand corner, you can see that we've got a server and a workstation. Both are Lenovo. I love Lenovo. On the left-hand side, we've got a generic representation of Synology using a two-disc NAS. Uh, I just did that for before people get upset and tell me, well, that two-disc NAS can't do all this. This is a generic representation of Synology. It looks nice on the screen. I like it. That's what I'm using. At the bottom down here, we have the C2 icon, and you can see I've labeled it, right? So over here, we've got uh, servers and workstations. Here, we've got an on-site NAS. Here, we've got a remote NAS somewhere, whether it's your office, a home office, an MSP office, or grandma's house. And then down here, we've got a C2 instance, whether it's in Europe, U.S., or Taiwan. Now, you should know that uh, based on the industry you're in, there may be requirements that you have to use C2 in Europe, you have to use C2 in the US, or you have to use C2 in Taiwan. There are rules around where people's personal data can be stored, and you should check with your governing laws to make sure you're storing your data in an acceptable way and in an acceptable place. So, in general, if we are using active backup for business and then hyper backup to backup you know, do some bare metal backups, right? So uh, right here, we've got, uh, I'm going to turn on my little pencil here. Right here, we have a server, right? And we want to back this up and we want to do bare metal backup. We can do that. We can also do bare metal backup with the workstation. What's a bare metal backup? A bare metal backup backs up the entire system and allows us in the event that we have to, to faithfully restore the entire machine on new hardware. Now, the really cool thing about bare metal backups with, with Synology is instead of actually uh, restoring the entire uh, backup, we can actually dig into the bare metal backup and pull out single files. So that is really cool. So in an instance when I'm, I'm working with uh, my friend Sean, who should be watching this, and this is kind of the way that he's set up. I've got three other MSPs that I work with that are set up this way. Um, and so what we're doing is we are either creating a bare metal backup or a file level backup. So a file level backup is literally just the files. We're not backing up the operating system, any of the shares, anything like that, just the files, right? But step one, we have a Synology NAS on site at the customer or at your location. Right, this can work either way, MSPs or companies. And what we're doing, we can do this a couple different ways. If we're doing bare metal backup, we're gonna have the active backup for business client running on these machines, and they are gonna push the backup onto this NAS uh, hourly, daily, whatever we specify, right? The other way, if we are going to do just um, file level, what we would do is we would have active backup for business. I'm going to say A, oh, my pen's not working there, A, B, B. That is, that is lovely. I must have a dead spot in my Wacom tablet. That's no good. So we're going we're gonna to 
cross this out. We're going to go A, B, B. All right, we're going to pretend that we did that. All right, so if we're using Active Backup for Business, what we can do is if we don't want to install the clients over here, uh, let me change the, the, uh, the color on this real quick. Uh, what we can do is using Active Backup for Business is we can come from this machine over to the server or the workstation and grab the files on each of these and take them back to the NAS, right? Okay, great, good, grand. We have a backup, right? So we have successfully uh, backed up. Both of these are now backed up here, right? So we've got a good backup here. What's next? Well, data isn't really backed up, right? Unless it's in three places. So now you have a decision to make. And this, this is where people kind of depend on us a little bit. Um, and I will tell you for my data, how this is backed up is if I have the resources, C2 is replaced with another NAS at a hot site, a warm site, a spare site. Most people aren't going to go to those lengths. Some people will. My data here is actually backed up this way, and I'll show you that here in a second. And this is how uh, we actually work with some other clients. So we've got our we've got our backup to on site, right? Then what happens is okay, we've got to make a backup of this. So most of the time, what happens? is the on-site NAS then backs up to the MSP's NAS at their office. Now, if this is a company doing it themselves, then it's grandma's house, a home office, whatever. I actually have clients who have safes in their house, and the safes are big enough that they have electricity and Ethernet, and the NAS is actually stored in a legitimate physical safe. Then, once it's backed up here, it's good practice to have it one more place. So then that's often where we will see this back up to C2. And this is really inexpensive. If you look at the cost of doing business, backing up to C2 is really inexpensive. And it's like backing up to another NAS, right? So it's not like it's an R-Sync backup or something. It is legit like backing up to another Synology NAS. So all the restore options, all the encryption options. And that's the other thing about this entire backup routine is that the encryption all the way from the clients to NAS number one to NAS number two to NAS number three or to C2, we are completely in control of the encryption. Synology cannot recover these files. If we lose the encryption keys of the passwords, we are in trouble. So let's recap. In this scenario, how this is working is uh, we are either doing one of two things. We are either pushing the backups this direction to the first NAS, right? Um, or we are pulling the files from here. Regardless, there's a backup of some sort happening using active backup for business to this first device files off of hardware to here. Then we're going from this device to a second NAS. Or sometimes we are skipping the second NAS, which I you can get away with it, um, and going straight to C2 or another backup. We recommend C2 only. Um, or you're going then from this NAS then to C2. There's yet another option. So let's say that the client doesn't want a NAS on site. They don't want this. Well, what can you do? As the MSP or, and most of the times that's probably where this is going to come to fruition. Yes, you can do backups using active backup for business directly to the NAS at the MSP's office. And of course you're going to use versioning, right? Right. And then from the MSP, we're going to go to C2. 
this is all really very inexpensive when you look at what it costs you to lose your data or to get ransomed and all any of that, right? And a lot of insurance companies are going to be looking for this kind of stuff. Uh, you're not going to be able to buy cyber liability insurance in the next few years without being able to prove that you're doing some of these very basic things. It is really inexpensive. When you start looking at the cost of a NAS, right? So you can put in a two, a two disc NAS, you can get the enclosure for like, let's just call it, let's just call it 300, right? And then you can get a couple four terabyte drives for like 70 bucks a piece. So you're out $440 uh, to back up your data, you know, because you don't have to back up the bare metal, right? That's more for like a disaster recovery, easy recovery, things like that. The important thing is really the files. So you're at 440 there. Then to back up four terabytes a year uh, over at Synology C2 is going to be like 240 bucks, right? So for like less than $700, now you've got assurance. You can assure your employees. You can assure your customers. You can assure the insurance company that you are doing the right thing. So if you've got questions about this, and I'm sure, and I actually hope that this evokes some questions. So if you've got questions Ask any questions that you've got down in the comments right now. We will answer them. I will do a follow-up video. Let me know if this makes sense, this, this flow chart, the way that this kind of works. Um, like I said, uh, this what can Synology do is going to become a regular staple here. And we're going to do some other types of backup scenarios with this using like Synology Drive. So let me know what you want to know about this, and I will answer the questions. We are Synology professionals. We deploy these all over the world, and we know what these devices can do, what they can't do. We love them because we own the data, or and when I say we, it's the royal we, right? Like the company owns the data. Um, we don't have to worry about third parties, relying on third parties, except for that last Synology C2 handoff, which some people don't do. I recommend it especially with the two NAS, you know, you've got two NASs and then Synology. I do recommend that. Um, we love it because we're in control of the encryption keys. We're in control of the data. If you've got questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comments down below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, comment, and share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below along with our affiliate links. And I've put some NAS affiliate links down below. Some hard drive affiliate links clearly marked. Our Patreon link is down below. And if you need IT consulting, reach out at willyhow.com. We can help you set this up. We have clients. If you need references, we can refer you to folks where we are doing this. And it is working very, very well. If you need any other IT consulting, networking, voice over IP, security, reach out. If we can't help you, we'll get you to someone who can. That is our promise to you. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.